Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video I will be covering everything that is in this new Reforger Experimental 0.9.6 build that released earlier this week. To remind, this is a test build to test possible future content and features for Reforger before it is released to public servers. So with really no more further delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> Starting off, we should cover the general asset changes that are coming with this update, which are mainly animation changes. This experimental build will see changes to the prone roll animation, jump animation, reload animations for snipers, death animation, swimming animations, grenade usage animation, M16 fire selector animation, weapon inspection animations, and break dash collision reaction animations for characters and vehicles. Aside from that, they added the unfolding of the M16 M203 sights and the addition of a lower crouch stance that you can control using the control button and the mouse scroll. Next up we have changes to Game Master. Starting off they added a new quick placing bar that does as the name suggests and allows you to quickly select and place assets. Game Masters now have an access to a few new features to play around with that include a ping that is visible only to them and the ability to interact with objects in the world as well as the ability to instantly fill vehicles with crew and passengers while placing them in a vehicle. In other minor changes, our vision now has the ability to add different types of lens flares and the button for taking control of AI has moved from C to U as a base bind. From Game Master we have some larger changes, which is the series of changes that came to conflict with this build. First up, supplies now have far more usage as several activities will now require them, including respawning on conflict bases, requesting vehicles, and spawning defenders in barracks. There will also be more ways to acquire supplies as the new FIA supply drops can be rated to obtain supplies to distribute back to your base. However, be careful as the FIA will attempt to retake their lost supply drops. In addition to this, there are more buildings to build at your bases, including heavy vehicle depots and an antenna installation which will extend the radio signal of the base. Also changed in conflict is the objective, with the new winning condition being based around having a certain amount of points in a certain amount of time and holding them. To supply this, the radio capture has been removed and will now be captured by just having a majority in an area. While that area is being captured, the base icon will now flash, and any defenders that are there will now alert the team about the attack. In terms of general UI changes, there are some slight tweaks, but we are also getting a new protractor as a map tool. Speaking of the map tools and the topographical map in general, you got some redesigns with the addition of bridges, walls, and castle visualizations to the map, as well as some other minor tweaks. From here we have some more gameplay changes they cover. First up, players can now roll while prone. In addition to this, we now have sight switching. This feature allows you to use the Alt or right MB to switch between sights. You can see this feature currently on the SVD-PSO1. Along with this, there is an inventory action to remove and attach scopes now, and the ability to enable or disable bipods. Aside from that, they state there is a new destructible system. They changed some base keybinds, changed how the kill feed system works, and finally changed underwater exhaust effects. In terms of AI changes, AI can now use and react to melee, they can now throw grenades, they can react to vehicle horns, they have special behavior patterns for using MGs and snipers, they will walk away from opening doors so they don't get stuck, they will have more reliable healing mechanics and are able to switch weapons while in a turret, so really just overall we're going to have smarter, more reactive AI following this update. This update also had an extensive series of audio and workbench changes, but for the sake of time, let's finish this video off with the coverage of the changes to mod management. The mod management has been added to allow easier updating and downloading of mod dependencies, and it also adds with it the new mod presets, mod manager export tools, and along with that, the mod manager will auto-disable mods that do not work due to a dependency of that mod being disabled. So really that is everything that is currently in the Arma Reforger experimental build. It is a lot to check out and I'm really curious to how it will change gameplay when it comes to public servers in 0.9.6. I'm curious to see how long it's going to take to get there. I'm also curious to see if all of the features get there or if we get another update of the build um, sometime between now and release. But until then, this has been Christopher Reese and I hope to see you all next time.